All right, 77, glorify thy name. Father, we love you, we worship and adore you. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Glorify thy name. Jesus, we love you, we worship and adore you. Glorify the name in all the earth. Glorify the name. Glorify the name. Thank you again this evening. We thank you for another Tuesday, Lord, that you have given us opportunity, Lord, that we can come to study your word, Lord. Father, we study your word, Lord, to be equipped, Lord, that we can defend the faith we profess to have. We thank you, Lord, for carrying us through this day, Lord, and allowing us to come in your presence again. Amen. Father, we thank you again for this time together. We thank you for this lesson. We thank you, Lord, for those that are pressing here, Lord, and those that are on our way, and even those that won't be here this evening, we pray that you bless them, Lord. Father, we pray, Lord, that your presence be with us, Lord. You take the highest seat, and we take the lower seat. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to uh, see how we can finish this lesson quick. Uh, we'll be, our text will be coming from Hebrews chapter 13 verses 5 to 6 so please mark your bible hebrews chapter 13 verses 5 to 6 if someone has it they can just go ahead and read that please read loud <laughs> hebrews chapter 13 verses 5 to 6 hebrews 13 5 to 6 read mm -hmm. keep your lives free from the law of money mm -hmm. And be content with what you have. Mm -hmm. Because God has said, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mad mortal do to me? Keep your life free of what? Money. Money. And you look at the last phrase of that passage it tells you that i will never leave thee nor what forsake thee we are often anxious right about the things of this life who in this room is not anxious about the things of the life we all we are often anxious right and if you read philippians for paul says do not be anxious about what anything right but as human beings, even as Christian, we are anxious about some things. Tell me, what are you anxious for this morning? I mean, this evening. What are you anxious for this evening? Yeah. If you are not anxious about anything this evening, I guarantee you, maybe from this morning to now, there was something you were anxious about. 
either anxious about how you go to work, anxious about going to the store to buy something, anxious when the time is approaching for something. We are always anxious. Now, in our youth, we ask these questions. What will I do when I finish school? We ask that question most of the time. I will be on my own. Will I ever be able to afford the things I dream of? What will I eat? What will I wear? Jesus tells us not to do what? Worry about these things, right? In Matthew 6, 31. He said, do not worry about what you will what? Eat, drink, or wear. Don't even worry about what? Your life. But he says, then he comes and says, but seek ye first, right? The kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that you are anxious about will be what? Added onto. He didn't say he will give it to you. He said you, it will do what? It will be added onto you. Sometimes we ask ourselves these questions. Is this wise for me to turn down that profitable job that gave me a lot of money, but I have to leave my family and also leave the Lord's work? Sometimes we are torn between two things. You get a good job or you have a good shift, but if you leave, if you go and accept it, you either leave the time you spend with your family or the time you spend with God. Now, let's say, for instance, today is Tuesday and there are some people who have this Tuesday off, but they are not here. Maybe they're taking over time. Why do you think they would do that? They want more, right? They are anxious to do what? To make more money. So you forsake the assembly or you forsake the fellowship with your brothers and sisters to go out there to make more money. And so sometimes we take these things more important than the way we take the things of God. Okay? So in little life, when we're getting older now, we ask this question. What about my retirement? Who, who, who have concern about your retirement. We all do. With the money I'm saving in my 401, will it be good enough? I mean, will, it be, will it be sufficient enough to take me through until I leave this earth? We, we think about those things. The reason why you think about your retirement because most of you have 401 or something, right? You think about what? When you get old. If you're not thinking about that, you won't have 401. If you're not thinking about your retirement, you will not have 401. The reason why you have it is because you think about the future. You know, will I have enough money to take care of myself? Will I continue to be able to manage my health? We all think about those things when I get old. Will I be able to manage my health? Will I be able to uh, stay home and manage my health? Will I be able to move around like the way I was when I was younger? We think about those things. Then. How will I make it when my husband or my wife die? We think about those things then. You know, how will I make it? You know, or, or how can I make it if my children are not around? You know, I, I think sometimes when these things happen to us, the first thing we start to realize or we start to think about is in our own strength. We, we, we start to think about doing it in our own strength or in our own understanding. And then realizing that we have someone there who's going to do it for us. All you need to do is to trust in him. So this is what the word tells us. The word says, look out for number one. Who is the number one? No, no, no. Left for that. That's the word now. The word. Say you should look up for number one. Who is number one? You. Yourself. The word said, you look care, you take care of yourself first. Forget about it. First of all, 
if you want to climb the ladder, you have to step on people to go up there. Right? That's what we want to look at it. You can handle anything if you have a lot of money. That's what we say. You can handle anything if you have enough money. Is that truth? Is that truth? No. Can money give you everything? No. no. If that's the case, they will not have people who have money committing suicide, doing this and doing that. Money helps to solve some issues for you. But money cannot, money is not all it's life. Money cannot give you love. Money cannot give you fellowship. Money can give you those things then. Okay? And, and so sometimes we just think the more money I make, the better off I will be. And you come to realize the more money you make, the more trouble you get. The more money you make, the more you want more. Okay? And, and so the word teaches us that you have to take care of yourself at all costs. And that's what today we see we're doing ourselves as Christians. We are going by the model of the word. Take care of yourself first. Don't worry about the next person. You know? Therefore, we have this desire of worth or possessions. Or the desire for another person's possessions, whether even it is good or bad. The reason why today we are dying for material possessions or even everybody in the next person for possession because we want everything for ourselves. Right? We want everything for ourselves. What will you envy the next person? If God has blessed this person, what will you envy them? Because you think it's not good for that person, it's good for you. Right? So you do everything in your power, whether it's good or bad, you try to uh, you, you try to take those things from the people, from the people God have blessed, because you don't want them to have the blessing. You want all the blessings for you. The gospel of Jesus Christ does not take away these questions. However, an answer is provided in the form of a promise. All these questions we're asking, how will I do this? I'm anxious about this. And you know, how, how will my life be there? The Bible did not start our questions. But the Bible gave us what? Answer to it, a promise. And the promise is this. I will never leave you, nor forsake thee. That is the promise that what? God gave us. This promise made God's command not to be anxious about our life. It makes a lot of sense. Why should you be anxious about your life? Who has the control of your life? God. But we're anxious about it, though, right? We are anxious about our life. But if we are certain that God's command is truth, then we'll not be what? Anxious about our life. So this text, our text this I mean, evening, it provides three commands to go with this promise. Three commands. One, it says, live without confidence. That's what the first command. Live without enviness or being envy. Okay? Live without confidence. What does it mean to convert? C O V E T. What does it mean to do that? Huh? You want to grab it. You want to take it. Whether if you don't care whether it's right or wrong, you want to take it. Let me read uh, Exodus. 20, 17. Exodus 20, 17. Yep. 17. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife mm -hmm. or his male or female servant, mm -hmm. his ox or donkey, mm -hmm. or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Okay. You should know what? Covet your neighbor. Covet it. That means don't take it by force. Don't do it. So this word comfort has to do with, with the I mean the belongings of others. Okay, not simply wanting what another person has. If that was the case, now it is not telling you, let's say if William has something and William is selling that stuff, 
and I want it, that's not confidentness. You get a point? Yeah. If you go to the market and they're selling something and you buy it, you're not confident it. Because if that was the case, then there would, there would be no buying and selling. So this word does not mean that you're going to take someone's stuff by force. It's not mean that. It means that you're going to go to someone to take that property that does not belong to you because you have the power for it. That's what the word means. The inner desire you may have to take others belonging to the point that it takes to destroy just to keep that person from owning it. You know, sometimes we go to the extent of even destroying people's life because we want to get our possessions. That's right. And I read this morning about the, the, the story with Belak and Bela. Mm -hmm. And it just bring me back to that because he was so angry and jealous yep. about all of blessing the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. You see how many times he wanted Bela to Cause the children of Israel, he took them to this side, yeah, and he was so blessed. And he said, No, you gotta do another. They went, and every time you were going, you were making the sacrifices, yeah, so he could really, really see that the children of Israel to come down. Mm -hmm. But instead of that, he they were blessing, they were blessed, were blessed. Of Israel, and he was getting all the that's right. So sometimes too much of covenants, that's, that's right, and all kind of thing. I will, sometimes you're go ahead, bro. When David got Uriah killed, oh, he just took my test. Yeah, oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was, was going to ask. Yeah. Um, I mean, the way we define uh, covetousness, righteousness, yeah. it's about yearning to us. Mm -hmm. That's right. Was it? Was it? Was it being covetous yes. at that point? Yes, yes it was. Yes, it was. And it's just in my in my note here. Yes. So so covetousness is the inner desire that you have to take other people's possessions or belonging mm -hmm. to the point of destroying them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we do that. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you, you, you see someone go have blessed that person and you go to the end of this world to destroy them. Sometimes you're not destroying them just by killing them, mm -hmm. but by seeing the worst thing of them. Yeah. Christ said, you see, if anyone who hates his brother That's right. has killed him. That's right. For you, you won't kill him with a gun. That's right. You know, oh look, you know, look, look at William. Look at William get this thing. Look at William get. You know what? Maybe William said in drugs, and you're going all out there to destroy William because you are envy of what William has. And so sometimes we go to the point of destroying people just to get the material possession. That's what you see in Africa or in India. You see children kill their own parents for inheritance. You, you see two brothers in Africa, one, one God blessed them, and the other one done. You go kill his brother just to get his property. We go to, to the state of destroying each other just because we want the possession of that person. And God said, don't do that. You know, also gaining wealth and not being rich towards God. That covetousness in us too. God bless you with all the material possession. And guess what happened? You turn against God. Time, time for you to give offering. No, I'm not getting God offering. Or time for you to bless the church, or maybe it's time for you to, 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 to help one another. You don't do that. And, and most of the time, when God gave us blessings, He blesses you so you can be a blessing to other too. And, and that's the way it ought to be. Like now, when we say blessing, it's not only material possessions, you can be a blessing just by your presence, you can be blessed, you can be a blessing just by encouragement. And, and these are the things that we're talking about here. Let, let, let me look. 12, 15 to 21. And so I'm hoping Matthew 6, 19 to 21. Luke 12, 15 to 21. And Matthew 6, 19 to 21. 15 to 21. Right? Mm -hmm. Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Mm -hmm. Life does not consist in an abundance of possession. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. 
and there I will store my surplus, my surplus grains. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and make merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. But what it means to be rich towards God? What it means by that? God, you think God wants your money? No. Rich towards God is to acknowledge God. That you know what? What I have belongs to God, and God is the one that gave it to me. If you read that text, that guy said, I, 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 I. Never one day mention God in that text. I will do this. Not, not, only, not, not even those who work on that. He failed to realize that with all God, that plan he had, he found will not, I mean, germinate. It will not grow. He will not have the harvest. He, he does not control the rain. He does not control the sun. He does not control anything. <laughs> And, and so he said, now my farm, you know, I have so much. I'm just going to store it. I'm going to enjoy it. You know, and God said, this very night, your life is required of you. And guess who, you know, who, who enjoyed that stuff? Do you know who enjoyed the farm and all the, the, the harvest he had? Different people then. You know, that's why someone said it takes a village, right? To do what? Everywhere you are today in life, you don't get about mistake. God passed through people to help you along the way to where you are today. And when you arrive to where you are today, don't turn your back on God or those people then. That's what this God did. Now, most of the time, when, when God has blessed us, we turn our back on God. First of all, we, Liberian, we are very good at that. You know, God, you know what? If you take me from the war and you take me to America, I will serve you for the rest of my life. God, you God say, okay, I will do that. He stood by his promise. He brought you and everything. And guess what happened? You come and God gave you all the things you, 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 you asked him for. He gave it to you. And the first person you turn against is God. You don't come to church. You don't do his service. You give all the excuses why not to do God's work. And then when you find yourself those things now going away or you're in trouble, then you won't call on God. And God said, no, no, no. You rejected me already. You see? And, and so that's what, anyone have Matthew 6, 19 to 21? Mm -hmm. Do not store up for yourself treasure on earth, mm -hmm. but more and find not destroy, mm -hmm. and where things break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasure in heaven, where more and do not destroy your wealth, do not break in and steal. Okay. Where your treasure is, mm -hmm. there your heart will be. Do you think Jesus was talking to disciples not to save for tomorrow? Is that what Jesus was saying here? You think Jesus was saying, don't save for tomorrow? No. Don't, don't get emergency fund? No. That's not what Jesus was saying here. He said, do not store up for yourself what treasure what? Okay. on this earth. He, what he's trying to say is this. Do, do, do not focus so much on the physical on this earth and forget about the spiritual part. Do not focus so much on getting possession on this world, in this world and you forget your soul. That's what he was trying to tell them. Jesus is not telling you don't go to work. No. He wants you to go to work and earn an earnest income. But do not do it and put him last. That's why I say, seek ye first. You can do all those things. But make sure Christ comes first in your life. He said, do not store up treasure for yourself. Because guess what happened? Everything we have on this earth is just for a season. Even your own life is just for a season. When you die, you're not taking it anywhere with you. And you know, most of the time, people think that by having so much material possessions, they will leave legacy. You don't leave legacy by what you have. You leave legacy by what you do. 
you leave legacy by touching the life of other people then. That's it's a legacy you leave. So he says, he said, but he said, instead, store up treasure for yourself where? In heaven. When you store up treasure for yourself in heaven, you know who protected? God protected. And no thief and nothing can destroy it. And so he says we to do that. So we should understand that, that when God bless you, always glorify God. Always say it was the grace of God that got me the way I am today. It is not your own strength. It is not your own, I mean, uh, understanding. It is God who brought you from where you are to where you are today, and the same God can take you to where you want to go. That's why Jesus said uh, uh, in, in John, I am, I am the, no, he said, I am the vine, and you are what? The branches. If you remain in me, and my word remain in you, you will go to do what? Their fruit. Instead of being envious or instead of being covetous, what you need to do is to bear more fruit in Jesus Christ. Stick to the vine. The reason why some of us we are not prospering in the, in, the, in the things of God is because we have attached ourselves. Detached ourselves from the vine. Okay? And so, if you are someone who are covered, high got it. Covetous, there will be a downfall to you. Look at Judas. Let, let's read John 12, 1 to 7. <clears throat> 1 to 7. 1 to 7. Mm -hmm. We read from there. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus lived, mm -hmm. whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nerd, an expensive perfume she poured she poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to be him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wage, a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because it was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. Okay, so you see, the desire of getting more, that was one of Judas' downfall. He wanted to get more and more and more. And that's what happened with us. When we have that inner desire to get more and more and more in this world, that will be a start of your downfall. Amen? Amen. That will be a start of the downfall. Look, it may come in so many ways. Sometimes we work so hard that we get sick. So, sometimes we work so hard and you don't see anything. You don't see anything. You're not in progress. And you wonder, but all the hours I'm doing, where's the money? The Judas love, love material possession so much until when a sister went to put the expensive perfume <laughs> On the feet of Jesus, he questioned it. Why would he not sell it to get the money to the poor? And he, he knew you were lying. Yeah. <laughs> he wanted for himself to keep it. So, what's the solution of having this inner desire of more? What is the solution? Let, let's let's read first Thessalonians. I mean, first Th uh, Timothy, mm -hmm. chapter six, one to seven. I mean, chapter six, seven to nineteen. First Thessalonians. Yes, First Thessalonians 6, 7 to 19, and so on open Ephesians 4 28. 6, 7 to 19. Mm -hmm. First Thessalonians doesn't have 6. First Thessalonians. Have... Nah, sorry, first Timothy. First Timothy. First Timothy 6 from verse 7 to 19. 7 to 19. And Ephesians 4 28. 7 to 19, right? Mm-hmm. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. Mm -hmm. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap. Sorry. So, Paul writes to Timothy, right? 
that we brought nothing into this world. Isn't that truth? Yeah. If anyone brought anything in this world when you're born, I don't want to be your friend. <laughs> but come on, Bishop. You, we brought nothing in this world, and the Bible says we will do what? We we'll take nothing out, right? Where we say next? Mm -hmm. Verse nine. Those who want to get rich mm -hmm. fall into temptation. Stop, stop right there. Those who want to get rich, they fall in what temptation in all kinds of what trap? What is a trap? If you ever hunt before or you go fishing, there is a trap. But the devil set trap for us. He set trap through our eyes of, I mean, our desire of wanting more and more and more. And so, since you want to get rich, you fall in all kinds of trap and temptation. You know what? I know I want, I want to get rich. I probably sell drugs. Yeah. The, the, the work I'm doing it. I mean, five to eight is not enough. Let me go do this. Or let me go set my body. Let me go do this stuff here. All these things in, it come because you want more. The one you have, it is not enough. You want more and more and more. Why? Right, right. I'm into many foolish and harmful desire that mm -hmm. plunge people into ruin and destruction. Mm -hmm. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. So, sorry. This passage remind me like, if you came from work, I mean you. You, you got paid on Friday and you have, maybe you pay the bills, everything you have, maybe $200. And you say, I need more. So I'll go to the casino. I'll go to the casino and make more money. And then you go there, you say, you're making money. You lose everything. That's correct. You know, the desire to make more and more and more and ruin your life. Go ahead, brother. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Now, start right there. The Bible did not say money is bad. It says the love of money is the root of all. And we can see it today in the world. You, you can see it. The, 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 the love for money is the root. Look, if you want money or material possession, you will do anything possible to get it. It will cause you to steal. You go and steal. It will cause you to want to kill. You go get you. You kill someone just because you want money, my right, brother. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many graves. You see, brother. For the love of money, people have what? Leave the faith. That's very truth. In the church today, people who know the truth. They will turn their back on the services of God because they want to go make more money. And God is looking at them just smiling. You can't deceive God. <laughs> See, we, we, today we leave the Bible, Tuesday Bible study, mm -hmm. Sunday morning watch the service. We leave all these things in because our desire is to make more money. Go ahead, brother. Some of wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Mm -hmm. But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith and take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the sight of God, who gives life to everything, mm -hmm. and of Christ Jesus, who, while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made a good confession, I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal, and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see. Okay. To aim the honor and okay. might forever. Do you think God saved you to leave you alone? Do you think God brought you closer to him that he forsake you? Do you think God, don't you think God knows everything you need? Yeah. Jesus tells us in Matthew, right? Before we open our mouth to say anything, right? 
He already knows it. So if you think God did not bring you this far to leave you alone, then why we are so anxious about these things? Why are we so my bent on getting more and more and more? And the promise says, I will never leave you, nor forsake thee. Yeah, lack of faith. But again, that's the trick the devil plays on us. The, the devil gave us all the desire, in the desire to want more and more, because that's the way he can take us away from God. I, I guarantee you today, if you ask some people, give it that day of the day, they're going to work to work. To do what? To make more money or what time? Because God cannot help to pay maybe some of that bills. So they think that they can do it on their own. Yeah. And so they leave the service of God and go do those things then. We, we, we cannot play with God. God did not call you yet to, to forsake thee. He did not call you to I mean to abandon you. He called you because he knows very well he can provide for you. Let, let's read, let's read Ephesians 4 28. Ephesians 4 28. Mm -hmm. You see, look, those who been stealing should steal what? No more. But you should use your hand that God gave you to work so that you can be able to do what? To help to be blessing to all. Don't be a lazy Christian. You know, there are some of us, uh, you know, I, I want money. I'll pray to God for money. You no, know, God already gave you some things to make money. He gave you your hands. He gave you the strength. He gave you the ability to go out there and work to make money. The only thing he's telling you, do not put your work before me. Do, do not take it more important than me. As long as you are putting me first in everything you do, I will always provide a means for you. Brothers and sisters, how many of you this week have gone hungry? Do you never have even a piece of bread to eat this morning? Anyone? No way. How many of you have been homeless for a long time? No way. You think you, you where you are today because you are so smart, but can you have money? No. You are there because God wanna brought you there. He provided that for you. The next thing is this. Number two is this. Live content. In the way, it, one of the ways we can get rid of this inner desire of more is to live being content. This is why Paul wrote to Timothy, 1 Timothy 6, verse 6 to 8. He said, Godliness with contentment. Is great gain. Now he didn't say godliness is great gain. He didn't say contentment is great gain. He combined both of them. He said godliness with contentment is great gain. Let's read First Timothy six, chapter six, verse six to eight. Six, verse six to eight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. Mm -hmm. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Let me ask you something. How many pair of shoes you need for you to say, I satisfy? How, how, how many dresses you need to say, I'm satisfied? How many cars you need but he said, I'm satisfied. How many shoes we men need to say we are satisfied? If most of us in this room, if we went into our closets now, we have shoes that we're not even wear before. We, it's just there. It, it's just there. And, 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 that was if we have food to eat, and what William? If we have food to eat, we should do what? Be thankful. Be thankful, contented. Contented. That's what Paul said in Philippines. He said, I, I, I learned the secret whether I've been hungry or having plenty. And what's, what's the secret? That the content, but the secret is I can do all things through Christ 
that gave me strength. You don't need all those things. You, you know, I was talking to one of our, um, our sister in the gym this morning. Different love them, and we're talking about contentment. And she said, Brother John, you know, uh, she from love on she doesn't, she said, you know, the poor you love on it is suffering. So my sister in law going, we bought my husband and myself, we bought so many stuff, and we fill up two, two like suitcases for them to go. So when you're talking, I said, that's true, though. But you know, I said, you know what they have? I said, they have contentment. She's like, oh my God, John, I didn't think about that. And she's a Christian. I'm like, they have contentment. I said, we in America, we have more, but we're not content. I said, that's why you see, we have all the inner states you can think about in the world. We have it. We have anxiety, depression, this, and that. Because, you know, we want more and more and more. Men get basic need. Men basic need is food, shelter, water, and clothes. If you have those four things, you can live wherever you want to live. You, you don't need all this. And, and that's why sometimes for us to move, it have for the move. Because we get so much junk that we don't even know what we have. Go ahead, sister. All right. Brother John, you don't know how many junk you have. Until you start to move. That's right. Oh, you can move, move, move. Can, 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 can you imagine, though? Can you, can you imagine if, if, let's say, Jesus said, okay, you didn't bring anything into this world, but when you die, Everything you had, it should be buried with you. So, so, some of our grave, <laughs> so, some of the grave will, will, will be so big, or that you have to get, or that, or that you can, you can, you have to get over or, or acre or land. That's that's correct. But you see the the, the way the way in which God, men, men, we are nothing, huh? No, 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 men, that's some men right now. So men get almost a hundred pair of shoes. For what? You only get you only get you only get two 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 your, your legs. Brothers and sisters, I see some people that say I have hundred cars. Hundred cars. You can only drive one at a time. Brothers and sisters, godliness, godliness with contentment is great gain. Look, when you when you are doing the things of God and you are content of what God is giving you, look, you can sleep like a baby. You, 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 you will not be envy of people who have more because you know God is blessing you and you are enough with what you have. But there are some of us who are not content. We call ourselves godly, but we are not content. We complain every day. We see people. We see people stop. We complain and complain and complain and complain. And so sometimes we go to bed with headache. You know. And so John shows that contentment to be the essence of the desire to gain by violent or threat of violent or misuse of authority. You know, sometimes the, the way we can we can get rid of this desire of more and more. It's always say, you know what I mean? Look at where I am today in life. You know, if God can bring me here, I show God can carry me in this place. You know, I am I will be content with what I have. Look, if God can give you little and you are content with little, you'll give you more. The reason why some of God don't give us more because we are not content with the one we have. You know, we complain a whole lot. Okay, so this has nothing whatsoever. To do with the desire to increase one's earning by legitimate means. Now, let me say this: being content does not mean that if you have the opportunity to work and earn money, you should reject it. That's not a senior. That's not what a senior. If I am working, I go to work. It's legitimate work I am doing. I am content with my work and content with what I make. But the reason why that I am working, not only for me to benefit, but those who are that in, what, in need. That's the reason why God gave you the position you have, like to work on something. God gave you that job to help not only yourself, but to help those that are in need. Let's let, let read Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. 
16. Mm -hmm. So then, as we have opportunity, let mm -hmm. us do good to everyone, mm -hmm. and especially to those who are of the household of faith. When we have what? The opportunity. Yes, yes. Let me ask you a question. Do you have the opportunity to do good to all men? Yes. We do. We all have the opportunity, and there's always an opportunity to help people. He said, do good to all men, especially what? Those of the household. Come on, sister. Yes, sometimes when they talk about doing good, all we think about most of the time is your money. Mm -hmm. Most of the time it's your eyes. Mm -hmm. The way you, you come, you see people, you say, oh, how are you doing? Sometimes that's all that person needs for yes. that day. Mm -hmm. But somebody to say, oh, how are you doing? Oh, then they start telling you their whole life story because they need somebody who is willing to listen. Yeah. And, 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 and I'll give you a example. Today, Tuesday is always a long and tiring day for me and William. So we came in the office. I guess we we're trying to maybe close the eyes of the stuff. He said, you know, I'm going to go to Dunkin' Donuts and get me a very big cup of coffee. And do you need something? So I said, yeah. So I took up my, my wallet, gave him money. He said, no, 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 Brother John. I get it. I said, are you sure? He said, I get it. Now, he quite said, okay, fine. Now, if he had it, he said, oh, Brother John, give him money. There's nothing wrong with that. But he just showed me what kindness. Being gener generous to me. Yeah. And, and so the reason why that we have the opportunity, because every day God gave us opportunity to help the next person. Mm -hmm. Not only with your material possessions, but doing good means just some, a phone call. Mm -hmm. My sister, how are you doing today? Or just to call, or just to, to encourage someone. Right? We can do that. Yeah, so most times in my office, I receive calls from nurses or mm -hmm. doctors and different floors and uh, there's this particular section of the hospital I, I usually get i feel the other sections of the hospitals the nurses are very rude but the oncology unit is always the nurses are always very calm and everything so there was a day i got a call and this nurse was like oh you actually have a way of always um, speaking that kind of calms people down mm -hmm. when you pick up the phone and you greet and it's more like it's unexpected because they're expecting a ash tone and yeah. everything and i'm like i just feel that there are everyday people need an act of kindness mm -hmm. because you don't know what your voice could be impacting on somebody and the nurse was like yeah that's true i think every day we all need that but my point is like you said an act of kindness every day goes a long way right. in helping somebody you don't know whose life you could be saving at mm -hmm. that point that's it right it could just be a brother it could be a sister but we should always cry let's let's not act like the world you understand if the world is coming <laughs> at us we should be calm and show that we're christians when reacting back to the world that's correct so let me conclude this number two then we rush to number three when a youth is Content, he or she will not steal. When a youth is content, he or she will not steal. When a youth is content, they will not ruin that reputation to go ahead. Okay? When a youth is content, they will not neglect their families to events. Have you seen case neglect their family to events? Now, when an elderly is content they will not he will not just pile up everything and not be rich towards god you will always acknowledge god they will not seek to advance in the matters of estate and inheritance when you are content you will not be just want to build all your your material possession or stuff them you'll be content with what you have you will not seek pleasure at the expense of holiness, you don't do that. Let's look, let, let's walk through the, the last one. Live without fear. He said, I will not leave you, nor forsake thee. Live without fear does not mean every kind of fear. We are to fear God, right? Let's read Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. 
Where's the fun here? Mm -hmm. There is fun here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body. The only person, okay, that we can be afraid of or fear is what God. Because God is the only one that can destroy both the what the soul and the body. Man can kill your mother body, but he cannot kill your soul. Okay, God promised to be with who? Joshua. Joshua was not afraid. He said, "I will be with you." Okay, did I tell you to be courageous? Right. God was with Moses, no doubt. But now, will he be with Joshua? He was with Joshua. God has God was with Jesus and the apostles, and Jesus and the apostles were not afraid. Expect Jesus were not afraid. Will God be with us? You think? If God is with you this morning, this evening, yeah. God is with you. That's why our text said, "What? I will never leave you, nor forsake thee." Do we, do we, do we, do we, do we, do we believe that promise? So tonight when you go home, no matter what you're going, what you're going through, what you have or you don't have, be content. Don't be en envious of anyone. Be, be, be glad with where God has you in your life. And if God has it for you, he will give it to you. If God says you're going to be a millionaire, you're going to be a millionaire. No, matter, no one can stop it. If, if God says you're going to be working for people, you've been working for people. No one can change it. The Bible, I mean, the, 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 there's a saying where God closes a door, no man can open it. When man, when God opens a door, no man can close it. Understand that. So he said, I will be with you to the end of the world. You know, he says, I mean, look at he says what? He said, all authority have been given to me, right? In Matthew 28. All authority have been given to me, both in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go in all the world right? and preach the gospel. He who believes in his baptized shall be saved. Behold, I am with you always to the very end of the age. That's the promise of God. Should we be afraid of, I mean, should we, should we fear in our old age? John 43, what it says. John 43. We did on Sunday. He says, I am going to prepare a place for you, right? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back to do what? To receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you will be. Brother and sister, you have mansions waiting for you. God, God is, Jesus is going to come back to receive you. So in your old age, don't be afraid of death. That's right. If you're not putting nothing in mission, you'll be high your will, you'll be sleeping on the street. That's right. So, 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 look, look, so we can see from, we can see from this when Jesus said that I'm going to prepare a place. Look at what I Stephen, Stephen, that they were stoned to death. Even in death, right? God will still be with us. Even in death, God will stay be with us. So why be afraid? Why, why be so anxious about things? God said, I'll be with you. What you need, I'll provide for you. Live to be what? Content. And don't be afraid of anything, of anyone, but be afraid of me. Because I'm the only one that can kill both your soul and your body. Brothers and sisters, most of the word says that we should take care of ourselves. That's what the Bible says. We should live with or being envious of the next person. Second, we should live being content. And third, live with our fear. If you do that, then the promise that God, Jesus gave us, I will be with you to the very end of the world. Guess what happened? You will not fear anything. You will always live. You will be content. You will never envy the next person. You will not be jealous of the next person. Because where you are today in life, God gets you there for a reason. Amen? He got you there for a reason. Never think you, you can. How are you here by worrying, by being anxious, can change something? Nothing. Nothing. We just get headache. We get sick. Some of us die from worry. We don't think we can change it. We can't change it. Be content to where you are. We brought nothing in this world. You will take nothing out. Nigga, you came. Nigga, you go back. 
the one you have, say, God, thank you. It was through your grace that I have what I have. And if God blesses you more, be a blessing to other people. God was a blessing. He had one son. He did not close his hand. He opened his hand, and God get all his children now. We ought to understand that. When God gave you work, he's not giving work just for yourself. He said, well, when we have the opportunity to be good to all men, especially those of the household, right? So this even I want to encourage you, put that word in your mind, put that, put that voice in your head. Hebrews 13. I will never leave you, nor forsake thee. And that promise is coming true in your life every day. God had never leave us one second. But we'll do what? We leave God. And every time we leave God, it's like your prodigal father's son. Your hands are always open. You when you change your mind, you come back to God. God is there to welcome you. So, brothers, to go home. If you've been envious of someone, stop it. If you be jealous, if you've been jealous of someone, stop it. If God bless a brother or sister, be, be I mean be happy with them. Amen. Amen. It, 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 live with what you have. Stop, stop wanting more and more and more. It will bring you a downfall. And live in the fear of God. Work on your own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. Amen. We we'll stop here this evening. We we'll thank God. Thank you again for this evening. We we'll thank you again for this passage. Again, as we teach these things, we'll not just be the year, but we should be the doer of those things. In. We serve a living God, the God who is our provider, He's our protector. There's nowhere we go that He's not there. So let's continue to hold to His unchanging hands. Amen. Amen. Amen.